Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. In today, in well, in this video, I'm going to be answering a question from one of the what are called the Solomon papers. This is Solomon J. It's a mechanics. Um, it's it's an M1 mechanics Solomon J collection. It's question number five from Solomon J, which corresponds to question number four from my end of topic worksheet, which is this question. I've chosen for my endotopic worksheet for connected particles. One of my students has asked me to explain part C. I'm going to go through the whole question so it's more complete. And, um, you know, I'll get to part C at the end. So let's get started. Here we have a figure that shows a weight of mass 6 kilograms. So we know that the weight of this mass is 6 times G. Okay, 6 g newtons and connected by a light and extensible string which passes over a smooth fixed pulley to a box b of mass five kilograms so the mass of this box is five kilograms so that you're going to have five g newtons for the box and there is an object c of mass three kilograms resting on the horizontal floor of box b so you're going to have a mass of three kilograms over there so you're going to have here uh, 5 g newtons at, uh, for the the weight of the box and 3 g newtons the weight of the object resting on the floor of the box b okay then also of course you're going to have the tension acting in the string okay and the tension will also be acting on the pulley in that direction okay so we have like the forces acting on these um, on this system now it says the system is released from rest. Find giving your answers in terms of G, the acceleration of the system. So if you release this from rest, we can see that on the right side, box B and C are heavier together than the object A. So it's going to accelerate with this side going down and the side which A is on going up. That's what's going to happen. So we need to find what with uh, what, which acceleration it's going to uh, start moving. So basically, uh, what we need to do is consider the, f the, the resultant forces acting on the separate particles in terms of the ones that are moving in separate directions. So I'm going to first consider A. A is moving upwards. So I'm going to consider A, and I know that A is moving upwards, so I'm going to take up as positive. That's what, I'm, that's what this means here. It's like considering A and taking up as positive. It's just showing you kind of steps. So if I'm just focusing on A itself, I'm not considering anything else. I'm not considering the pulley. I'm not considering B. I'm just focusing on A by itself. That's what I'm doing here. Just considering the forces acting only on A, forgetting about everything else around it. So if you look at it, you're going to take up as positive. So you'll have T minus 6G is the resultant force. And we know that the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Okay, very important formula. So the resultant force for A is T minus 6G. So T minus 6G, and that's equal to the mass, which is 6 times the acceleration, which we have to find. And let's call that equation 1. Now, if I consider the particles B and C together, if I consider the particles B and C together, okay, just consider B and C together, and forget about everything else just this area here then what we're going to see is a very similar kind of situation if we take the resultant force this time i'm going to take down as positive because these two are moving down so for b alongside with c i'm going to take down as positive and if i do that the resultant force is going to be if you think about it down is 8g because it's a combined weight of both b and c minus t is equal to mass times acceleration so 8g minus t is equal to the mass, which is 8, times acceleration, which is a. That's equation 2. So these can now be solved simultaneously. Probably the easiest thing I can do is add the two equations together because t's have the same um, you know, magnitude but different signs. So I can say that uh, if I add them together, I'll have the t's will be eliminated, t minus t0, and minus 6g plus 8g is 2g. And 6a plus 8a is 14a. So now I can say a is equal to 2 over 14, which is 1 over 7g. So that's the acceleration. That's the answer to part a. 
And it says giving your answers in terms of G. So I don't now say G is 9.8 and then write down the decimal value. I leave it in terms of G. Then it says find the force on the pulley. Now, as we see that the, there's a force uh, from the string acting on the pulley, which is the tension on this side and the tension on this side. So the force on the pulley, pulley is actually two times the tension. And as I have already found the acceleration, I can use one of these equations to find the tension. So if I take equation one and rearrange it to make t the subject, I'll have t is equal to 6a plus 6g. And I know that a is 1 over 7g, so I can replace the a with 1 over 7g. So t is 6 over 7g plus 6g. And I can make them into um, equivalent fractions. So this becomes... 7 that becomes 42 so 6g over 7 6 over 7g plus 42 over 7g and that gives me t equals 48 over 7g but what we need is okay the force on the pulley so therefore the force on the pulley is equal to two times 48 over 7g which is 80 plus 16, that's 96 over 7 G Newtons. I should put the unit here as well. 1 over 7 G, that should say meters per second squared. Okay, so I've got now the force acting on the pulley. 96 over 7 G Newtons, and there the acceleration 1 over 7 G meters per second squared. So that's part A and B done. Now for part C. Show that the reaction between C and the floor of B is 18 over 7 G Newtons. Now, what we need to do here, when we're trying to find the reactions, where we have to kind of go and look at it in a bit more kind of, uh, you know, smaller detail. We've got to go kind of like zoom in, as you can. All right, we've got to think about this area here. So, the, the easiest way to deal with this is say, let's think about all the forces acting on the object C. So if we were to think about the forces acting on the object C, well, you've got the object C, and the object C is resting on the floor, okay, of B. So the forces acting on C are its weight, okay, which is, I think it was 3, right? Yeah, 3G, three 3G three Newtons. Okay, that's the weight acting on, on C. So that's C, and that's the floor of B, the floor of B. And you also got the reaction force of the floor on C, which is R. I call it R, right? And we know that this system is accelerating downwards with acceleration of 1 over 7 G meters per second squared. See, so I'm only considering C. So I'm considering just the object C only, nothing else. Just like before, we considered A and then we consider B and C together. Now I'm considering only C, just what are the forces acting on C. So this tension I don't have to worry about, and the weight of the box B I don't have to worry about. Okay, because I'm only concentrating on the forces acting on C, and the tension and the weight of B are all factored into the fact that we have an acceleration going on. Okay, so you don't have to think that, oh, I'm ignoring the T and the weight of B. No, I'm not. It's not, it's not being ignored because these are factors which are causing this acceleration to take place. So that's why, because if I was going to consider like, you know, more of it, B and C together, you'll have the reaction of C, uh, of, uh, C on uh, B on C, of the floor of B on C, and you'll have the reflection, the reaction, sorry, of the object B on C, and those two would cancel each other out. So I need to consider just one object and consider the forces acting on that object alone. Okay, so then I won't, I won't have the reaction force of C on B then because I'm only considering what's happening to C, not what's happening to B. Okay, so that's why you have to be very clear on these kind of questions. So now, um, what we need to do is think about, we're going to consider C and we're resolving, taking down as positive as C is moving down. The resultant force acting on C alone is 3G minus the reaction R, which we have to find, and that's equal to the mass, which is 3 times acceleration. Okay, I'll write that as A for now. We know, we know A is 1 over 7G, so we have 3G minus R equals 3 times 1 over 7, which is 3 over 7G, um, okay? And we can now find what R is, 
we can rearrange this. You've got 3g minus 3 over 7g equals r. So therefore, r is equal to, now we've got to make them into equivalent fractions. 3 is the same as over 7, 21 over 7, g minus 3 over 7, g. So therefore, r is equal to, if you subtract them, you get 18 over 7, g newtons. And there we have the answer for r. And is that correct? Yes, it's correct. 18 over 7, g. 18 over 7 G Newtons. Okay, so there we have the answer to part C. I hope that's clear. A lot of people are unclear of this kind of a problem. Um, you know, they're wondering what happened to the tension, what happened to the weight of B. Okay, but we're just considering this section alone and thinking what are the forces acting on C alone. Okay, so the reaction between C and the floor of B, okay, is going to be 18 over 7. That, that's the R over there. All right, so that's how to deal with such questions. Thank you for watching.